We got a pound cake sports break on the way, by the way, around five. On the way in, by the way, around 530. As he was designated, well, voted by you. It's not like anybody came on down from on high and crowned him. You did. You voted him best sports talker, according to Cleveland Scene Magazine. Did you ever get any, um, you didn't go to that party that they had, Pound Cake, but did you ever get anything in the mail that designated you as such, like a thing that you could frame or no? Nope. I thought that they did that. I thought they, like, mailed people, like, a piece of paper that had that on there. Maybe they did. Nothing like that? They could have sent it to the station, but uh, no, I didn't get anything at my address, no. And Alan Cox was the best radio show. Do you get anything? Me? No. I did not. Right. Um, but again, I, I, I wasn't looking. I thought maybe, uh, I don't know. I did get a letter from Laura, who is our bureau chief in Stuttgart, Germany. Listens on the iHeartRadio app. One of our international bureau chiefs. Alan, um, Poundcake was talking about wanting to go to Europe. We have an extra bedroom if he wanted to use it as a crash pad. Whoa. We live about two and a half hours from Munich and the Alps. I'm a stay-at-home mom of a five-month-old, and my husband works on base. So let Poundcake know if he wants to come to Europe, Stuttgart, he will have a free place to stay. P.S. We have tons of converters for phone plugs, so he wouldn't have to worry about that. I'm down. Very nice. Very generous. Now, be careful. Again, I read that letter as she wrote it, but Laura, just for future reference, be careful what you say to Pound Cake because he will take everything you say and hold you to it like a kindergartner. Well, I don't know. Well, if I'm traveling cross country uh, internationally, I would expect them to hold their end of the bargain. If she says, all you got to worry about is a plane ticket and you can crash on my couch or whatever her spare bedroom, I would expect her to hold up her side of the bargain just because that's what she said. Why would she do that if she didn't mean it? Mm -hmm. Um, But I, if I were to do something like that and it was like listener, you know, accommodated, then I would, I would record the whole thing. But obviously when people, when people use the phrase, you hold up your side of the bargain, the implication is that you each have a side to hold up. So what would your side of the bargain be? I would get myself there. I would pay for, what I need to survive, like food and such, and going gotcha. out and such. To survive. Well, you'd be worried about your survival there. I mean, it, they're not. It sur- sounds like they're in a military. Base. I wouldn't expect them to pay for my food and stuff, but right. like if she's telling me she has a bed for me to sleep on, then give me the bed. Sure. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, I, I would probably do something like it if I was there and they were like, hey, we, we want to at least, you know, go out to dinner with you, or I would probably pay for their dinner or take out, you know, clean. I, okay. I make it harder on them for putting me up. But, yeah, that, if I were to do something like that, I would just make a vlog of it. I'd be like, oh, I met this bureau chief, you know, out in Germany. Yeah, no, that, I think that would be the thing to do. Pound Cake's video travels. You trying to speak some German. Caking around the world. Taste a city with Pound Cake. <laughs> there you go. Caking around, <laughs> caking around the world. Caking all and over the world. The yeah. fancy cars, mm-hmm. the women in the caviar. Yeah. You know who we are, because we're caking all over the world. I would prefer going to like these places with someone who's been there before, because then they could tell me all the clubs. I don't want to waste my money. Like I don't want to go there and like go to a club where, one, you're going to wait in line all night. You know you're not going to be able to get in because it's a big like tourist attraction, or it's lame. Like I want someone that has the 411, that has the insight. So... You know, I get the best experience possible. So I don't want to stay in an Airbnb. I don't want to stay in a hotel. Mm-hmm. I would love to just shack up with someone. Shack up. And your husband's in the military? So he's like, Ridiculous. don't bang her husband, please. <laughs> no, but he's, he knows people. I don't know what he knows. He no, doesn't know I'm anybody his, in. His, her husband probably knows people in the military. Right, who are, who are on the low. Yeah. Oh, that would be the greatest trip of your life. Not very low then if you're telling. Other dudes. Well, but he could have a friend where he's yeah. like, hey, I know this guy. What's yeah. the name of the city again? Stuttgart, Germany is where she's posted. That's where her pin is. I don't know how to pronounce it. I don't know how to spell that. S-T-U. You have a pen? S-T-U. I got my, uh, yeah, my laptop. S-T-U. There's a lot of T's in this word. S-T-U. Mm-hmm. Double T. 
G A R T. G A R T. Okay, I apologize. It's a 14 hour flight from Cleveland. It's the capital of the Southwest Germany state mm. of Baden Wurttemberg. It's where they make Mercedes Benz, it's where they build Porsches. They've got beautiful museums. It's about the size of Milwaukee, maybe. That's pretty big. Um, they've got zoos and botanical gardens. I don't know. I, I ha- It's Germany, so they probably have a lot of freaky clubs. Also, I would, and th- this is just something very important. I need to go with some buffer whites because I don't, I don't know what it's going to be like. Buffer over there. whites. I, that, I would rather someone who lives over there. They're like, no, no, no. He checks out. He's fine. Like he's not here to cause problems. That's a aggressively white country. No, but you'll ha- it is. But you'll also you'll also kind of have you'll have that wide eyed tourist look too. I don't think anyone's going to get a whiff of aggression off of you. I'm they're they're going to. Ch- I'm not paying fifteen hundred dollars for a plane ticket to take chances. They're going to be happy to help you. I'd be like, I'm part German. They're like, you know German. <laughs> you know German at all. I'm like, I am. My dad was half German. Then they tell them that. It's going to be fine. Anyway, you've got a crash pad there with Laura and her husband and the five-month-old baby. I almost asked the most ignorant question. I was almost like, is Germany known for racism? <laughs> <laughs> Only. No, I'm not going to go what there. What an idiot. <laughs> Like and they've gotten country. better. I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are experiencing technical They only made laws because Please of it. Stand by. It's a big war. I don't know if you oh, heard of it. Oh, man. Why don't you we go to German Village, Mary? We will return to our regularly scheduled program momentarily. Please stay tuned. We all right. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, we're all learning things. <laughs> all learning little things here and there. I don't think I would. Anyone had to learn that. <laughs> Whatever. Well, but that aside, and I'm not even. They like, have issues with like you know like black soccer players are like yeah it sucks here and I'm not even They're throwing like, bananas at me on the pitch. But that's not exclusive to Germany though. Like I'm no, I know. I'm just Italian saying. Too, I, like, I'm saying like, in Europe. They're like you're not Italian. You're Sicilian. Like they. That's all the European countries. I assume all the European countries have racism. They're all aggressively white. You're a minority wherever you go. And that's why, again, with the whole, just like with the whole debt thing, I'm going to have debt regardless. I'm going to be a minority regardless. Anywhere I go in the in the world, other than Africa, even even, even Africa, I'm in a minority because I'm part white. So everywhere I go, I'm probably going to face some sort of discrimination. Well, and also, I mean, I, I don't think Jews are considered a race. You know, Hitler wanted to wipe them out because he thought they were an inferior group of people. But, I mean, when they talk about racism, they're talking about, like, people who look like you. But they also were killing black people and gay people. So, Well, that, that's what I'm saying. I mean, was, we were included Europe, in there too. Europe has its issues, yes. But they probably weren't finding a lot of black people in, you know, 1939 in Germany. And, I, you know, and— I want to go because I like the castles and stuff, and it, the landscape looks beautiful. But I'm not excited to have European food. I don't think there's any European food that I like. I don't like Italian, Italian food. I don't like Italian food. I like chicken parmesan, and that's about it. Every I bet they could make that all, for you. I know, but it's so like okay. Ameri- but like, what about Middle Eastern or Mediterranean food? That's not like European Greek food, food. That's a part of Europe. Well, no. You I mean Italy or okay? Yeah, or I, I, was, I wasn't thinking Greek food. My bad. Yes, but you don't right. like German food. <laughs> You know I, what they I, have? I don't know. I don't think I've had German food. What's, what did they make? Schnitzel. Dumplings. It's a lot of dumplings. Mm. And there's meat. Where's baklava from? Greece. Yeah. Okay, so I like baklava. Greek food's dynamite. Dude, Greek food, Mediterranean food is banging. Yeah, German Lebanese, food, though, you got to like food. sausages and dumplings. Yeah, and I don't like that, any of that stuff. potatoes. Like, I like... Sauerkraut. Schnitzel. Who made stuffed cabbage? Irish? A lot of people. Russians. <laughs> a lot of people were living Hungarians? on uh, during like <laughs> famines and things. Yeah, cabbage. I'd be good in like India and Asia. I like India. You'd be the guy that goes to Europe and finds the chain restaurants. Honestly, though, but it's different over there. Like even McDonald's is different over there. Oh, I know. I've so. eaten at an Irish McDonald's. Yeah, I don't like. I got a sandwich at a Dublin Subway. I think you'd like the spaghetti at a uh, McDonald's in the Philippines. <laughs> right. <laughs> or, or the fried chicken's pretty good too. Uh huh. 
What's that? Um, what's the uh, chain? Oh, Jolly Bee. A Jolly Bee. Yeah. There you go. But that's over here. But that, they, they probably that, got I mean, Jolly Bee over there. They have Jolly Bee over there, but they also have McDonald's and they have weird stuff on their menu. You can get rice with anything. But that's the exciting thing about international travel is that even chain restaurants have regional or national yeah. weird things. Uh, weird to us, you know. I have a friend in the Philippines and he I, I like he takes pictures of his uh, McDonald's order and it's like they have like rice and different different types of things. I was like, oh my God, McDonald's is so different over there. Like their chicken looks different. Like it ain't chicken. <laughs> no, the the chicken's chicken. <laughs> the, the hamburgers. The, the beef ain't beef. It's a little. Uh, there's a reason they don't want to sell as much of that because. <laughs> and and you can get the spaghetti, but it comes with hot dogs chopped up in it. Uh huh. And nothing wrong with that. Ooh, pretty good. Hot dogs are awesome. Yeah, when I was in elitist uh, Punta Cana. <laughs> When I was in Punta Cana, we ordered room service a pizza with sausage and like green pepper on it, and the sausage was cut up hot dogs. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was like, I I was laughing so we, we were hammered, and I was just laughing so hard because I'm like, I guess this is sausage here. Like I don't and know probably they... not thinly sliced, probably no, honking like, hunks of hot dog. Like on how your... you would roughly chop it for a four year old. Yes, you know I mean, yeah. <laughs> They're f- sliding off the pizza, <laughs> and it was like three in the morning. But it was just I laughed so anything. hard. Yeah, and they I knew that. So hard. What up, Alan? It's Martin. Uh, I think that song "Holes in His House" is done by Frank Sky <laughs> in like uh, 91, uh, 92, something like that. I'm not a Chicago man, but I know it's a Chicago sound. But I think it is Frank Sky. All right, later. Yeah, now the Chicago. Frank Ski. He's a big guy in radio. Atlanta radio. A guy named Frank Ski. He was the guy who did Hose in the House. Early 90s. But it was it was house music, I think. But uh, I was trying to, we were talking about, I played the Mary remix, the DJ Jake C. Mary remix, the Hose in the House. And I couldn't remember what the original song was. And it was Frank Ski. He was on the radio in Atlanta for a long time. He might still be on the radio. He did a big morning show down there. But in the early 90s, he was, like, doing radio in Baltimore. So he was a big club guy in Baltimore, and he did whores in the house. In the early 90s. Whores in this house. There's some whores in this house. There's some whores in this house. He's really putting his elbow into it, too. There's some whores in this house. 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 So, I mean, you know. Uh, you get the vibe of it. And you can imagine the early 90s, you know, when house music was massive. House and techno were coming out of Chicago and Detroit. Um, and clubs around the country are picking up on it. Imagine early 90s. You're in a club and a guy starts playing. There's some whores in this house. And the place probably went bananas. Because that's a banger in a club. <laughs> right? <laughs> They're like, yes, there are hoes. I'm right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Not hoes. We in here. Not hoes, yeah. whores. whores. There's whores, whores in this house. I'm it's me. There's some whores in this house. 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 So he did not spend a lot of time writing lyrics. They should do a remix. Someone should remix that to There's Some Horse in This House. And the <laughs> beat is like the dressage where they kind of like hit their little beat. Yeah. Do, 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 do. There's some whores in this house. There's some whores in this house. There's some whores in this house. There's some horse in this house. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, that's good. Thank you, Martin. Frank Ski is who you were thinking of. And the Chicago house music, but he was doing it out of Atlanta. He might still be on the air down there. There's a station called V103. That's a huge station in Atlanta. And he was the morning guy there for a long time. I don't know if he still is. But I'd see Frank Ski pop up in... Um, like my nerd radio newsletters and stuff. Um, oh, let me throw this one at you because that, what's the guy's name again? Thomas Jefferson. No, Walker Hayes. Yeah. Did that dumbass Applebee song? You know his name, yeah. He might be on, I had to look it up. He might be on to something because Applebee's did a date night pass you're welcome. 
and it sold out in one minute. And so obviously people are complaining. But if you're putting something on a website and you tell everybody to go to it, they probably had 50 of them. <laughs> you know, they're going to yeah. go away quickly. The Applebee's uh, date night pass. It was only $200, but it would be worth way more than that because it means you could go to Applebee's. Two people could go to Applebee's once a week for a year. And it got, uh, it would take $30. Well, it was worth 30 bucks a week. And so it's pretty good marketing for them, but it sold out very, very quickly. Their $200 date night pass uh, sold out in 60 seconds. And, of course, people are complaining. Um, but, you know, I mean, you, you're going to, if you like, you, if you try to get this, you already like Applebee's. Wait a minute, so, wait a minute. So you're probably already good, huh? What is it again? $200 for what? It's called a, a date night pass. But what yeah. do you get? You get $30 off stuff. You get $30 off. You and You can go once a week for a year. With a thirty dollar discount. Thirty dollar discount. Does it have to be a certain amount? Like you have to spend seventy five? No, it says you get thirty dollars off more than fifty meals at any Applebee's location for a year. So they say this is worth about twelve hundred dollars, but they're two hundred dollars. So you know why it sold out very quickly. But people who wanted it are already like Applebee's customers, right? So it's not gonna stop them from going. I'm curious how many they started out with though. Like, how many were they selling? Five because I, even, I mean, if they did that, it would probably still sell out in one minute. Mm -hmm. It's a physical card. It's a gold Applebee's date night pass that you get. It gets you $30, $30 off meals and non-alcoholic beverages. Still got to make that booze money. And there are people, probably no small amount of people trying to get this in time for Valentine's Day. But um, obviously, people are complaining about something that they didn't get and didn't pay for. Because why not? Hey, I didn't get my pass. Did you hey, pay for it? Nope. I want that. Well, uh, I mean, <laughs> it they... was in my cart, and then it said it was sold out. That would piss me off, though. If you got, if you yeah, put if it you in your cart, you were trying to get it, and yeah. you didn't get it. That's, yeah, I get it. Uh, that's annoying, especially if people are buying them just to resell them or something like that. Yeah, sure they are. And so that aside, there was a guy who went on a first date and surreptitiously filmed the conversation. Him and a girl. You, hear, you, you see any of this? No. So this guy in Miami goes on a first date with this woman that he asked out on Tinder. And it went viral because he's she got angry that he asked her to split the bill. I'm going to give you a little bit of super cut here because there's a little bit of conversation in the restaurant. And then she, they argue about it in the car. And this guy kind of secretly, I don't know how she didn't notice that. And these things always sound slightly staged to me too. Yeah. We're like, why are you? But I don't, maybe it's staged. I don't know. But this guy supposedly on a Tinder date with this girl. And she's mad that they are splitting the bill when the check comes. When that little folder shows up. Why are we splitting the bill? Well, I mean, it's our first date, so I thought we should maybe go half. I can't believe you made us split the bill. I mean, you ordered an appetizer that I didn't even touch. This guy's a real firecracker. I don't know if there was going to be a second date this no matter is... what happened. He sounds like he should be on... I mean... Uh, dating on the spectrum or love on the spectrum. Why do you think that I should okay, pay for... Okay, but you asked me out. I know. But you ordered something you that I did. You asked me out. All right. I'll just take you home. All right. See ya. Bye. He said she ordered something that she didn't eat. So obviously okay. everybody okay. took him I'm to confused. task. Well, I'll, th I'll play the follow-up here because he was responding to people's comments. Well, confused about what? If that's his logic... Then anything she or it would have been split no matter what. It's not about the appetizer. She's going to order an entree that you're not going to touch. She's going to order a drink that you're not going to touch. Also, I would never not the way split I date. the. I, I'm sure things are different here. You I finish that. I haven't dated in 15 years, but it's like I would never. All my years of dating, I never would sp split the check on a first date. 
maybe down the road, if she was like, hey, can we split this? I'd say, yeah, sure. But I guess I'm still, I still ha- I'm still old school about that. Would never split the check. On a first date, that's like when you're trying to show all your cards because you don't know if there's going to be a follow-up. Right. I don't know why these guys are planting their flag. Well, actually, I do know why. Because you young dudes, you're awash in tail. Oh, you, you don't do. have to go out and get it anymore. You're like on Tinder, like swipe, swipe, swipe. This one doesn't work out. I'll just get another one. What happened to feminism? <laughs> well, well, let's see what he says. What I don't understand is you ask for the date, so you pay. It's not like I'm forcing anybody to go on a date with me. Clearly, we are both 50-50 on the date. She wants to be there just as much as I want to be there. It's not like I'm forcing her to date me or go on a date with me. We both want to be there equally. Therefore, we should split the bill equally. I mean, that's one way to look at it, but I don't know how many dates you're going to get. I, that girl can't be alone. I'm sure, uh, I imagine that the uh, opinions on this split down, you know, gender lines for the most part. Guys going, yeah, and girls. But, uh, you know, it also seems like something you might want to figure out. I mean, for as much as people are on dating apps, aren't there some conversations that are being had prior to the date? seems like everybody now wants to get everything nailed down. Also, if I'm that girl... Don't even make a big deal about it. Like if it tur- if it was that much of a turnoff and a deal breaker for you, you pay for your half of the meal and you just don't talk to that guy again. That's why I was I wondered if it was staged. That's why because yeah. a lot of these they're like what they're not good actors, mm-hmm. you know. But this one she sounded pissed. So either she's a better actor than he is, or I don't know. I I mean, did you would you I, ever go on a first date I and paid. split the check? I, I've never done, I don't know, because I feel like there's been times where it's like, I'll pay for this thing, and then they'll offer to pay for the next thing. I'll be like, okay. But I'll usually pay for the first thing that we get to like, me, when we go out. You pay for dinner, she pays for the condoms. No, I usually go, you pay for dinner. <laughs> or I go, I'll pay for dinner, you pay for breakfast. Yeah! Hey. That's how you do it. How do you like it? <laughs> how do you like your eggs, over easy or fertilized? <laughs> Not that. <laughs> <laughs> to me, splitting the check is an indication that the date didn't go well. Like, I've been one time on a first date where me and this dude, the more that we talked, we were like, oh, this is absolutely not it. He was super misogynistic, and the more he drank, the more that came out to the point where he was like, I don't understand why you would even want a career that you had to travel for. Like, don't you want to be a mom? And I'm like, oh, boy. Like, oh, I remember is, that. So this wasn't yeah. you bu- This wasn't you mutually coming to that conclusion. You were like, I'm well, going to pay and get the hell out of here. We were like, we had our first drink, and we're like, oh, where do you? what do you do? How many siblings do you have? And then, like, as the first drink went down, and then the second drink, and then we're starting to talk about, like, life goals. And, like, you know, the conversation is continuing to go, and he's ordering more and more doubles and snapping his fingers and referring to the barmaid. Oh. <laughs> and things like that to the point where it was like, okay, like we both kind of looked at each other. Like he could tell that I was getting frustrated by those types of questions. And he was like, oh, this clearly isn't a housewife. He was very, very much so looking for a wife. And so um, we both kind of sat there quietly and finished our last drink. And I was like, we're going to get separate checks. He goes, yeah, yeah, oh, for sure. Like this is, we're not doing this again. Like we were on the same page that, hey, Okay, con- not even nice to meet you. Kind of like, good luck with your search. <laughs> yeah, swing and a miss. You know? Yeah. This is you're looking for a trad wife, and this ain't it. Right. That's Usually. the only time I think I've ever split a bill on a on a date. Yeah. I always do like the pretend to reach. Like if a guy asks me out on a date, <laughs> yeah, we know <laughs> this guy. Yeah. Uh, he's got Rex arms us. over here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like. Ooh. Oh, I can't reach it. There's uh, an unspoken gay law that whoever initiates the date should pay. So, gay law. <laughs> but I would never go to it. I would never go to a restaurant or have him take me to a restaurant that I couldn't pay for myself because I know there's a chance that I'm with some dusty dude that can't pay his side. So, gay law. <laughs> so if I'm if I'm on a date and the check comes and I know that he initiated the date, I want him to know that I know that he initiated the date. So I'll just like. Uh, look at my phone and then I'll like reach for it. He's like, oh no, I got it. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> I just, Gay law. Yeah, I, just, I object. <laughs> I just look to reach. He's like, oh no, no, I'll take care of it. I'm like, oh, okay, sweet. Who enforces the gay law? Um, gay police? Gay judge. Yeah. RuPaul. What's the siren sound like? Gay mother. 
<laughs> I couldn't get it to do it. Uh, okay, I got a break. Hey, uh, he's getting ready for the Pound Cake Sports break. That's coming up around 5.30. As is your very last chance to grab some money, there'll be $1,000 waiting for you around 5.30. Last keyword of the day to get that uh, grand from the buzzard bookie. If you want to get to a Cleveland Charge game, they're playing the Sixers G League team at the Wolstein Center, and I'll have a couple of tickets for you right after the break. This is the Alan Cox Show.